This man lived in a cave many thousands of years ago. He wanted to learn to be a good hunter, but until he learned to apply the principles of relative motion, he often went without his dinner. This forced him to figure out why he always missed the deer when he threw towards the target. The trouble seemed to be that the deer moved at the same time he threw the rock. Well, he would allow for the two movements, deer and rock. Guessing at the amount of the two motions, he soon became a skillful hunter because he always remembered to apply the principles of relative motion. To the deer, the rock seemed to come straight toward him. Actually, of course, the rock was thrown well ahead of the target. But from the deer's viewpoint, the rock appeared to approach like this. He would see its motion relative to his own motion. Here's another skillful use of the same principle of relative motion. Safe driving often depends upon accurate judgments of the speed of relative motion. Our actual speed is 50 miles an hour. The car ahead also is doing 50, so there is no relative motion between us. But if we slacken our speed to 40 miles an hour, the car ahead appears to be moving away from us at the rate of 10 miles an hour. As we increase our speed to 55, we are, in the sense of relative motion, approaching the car ahead at a relative speed of five miles an hour. A car coming toward us at an actual speed of 50 miles an hour will have a relative speed of 105. In a passing situation, our driver needs a good sense of relative motion or else. <laughs> At sea, while you need both skill and common sense, your relative motion problems can be plotted to obtain accurate solutions. This film will introduce you to the principles of relative motion as applied in naval maneuvers. Here is a definition of relative motion. It is the apparent motion of one moving object to another moving object. These ships are in a normal crossing maneuver we are seeing their actual or geographic motion. Now, let's go back, and this time we will travel with ship A and watch the apparent or relative motion of ship B. Ship B is on course 0, 090 0 degrees true, but her relative motion to ship A is in this line of positions, the direction of which is 130 degrees true. Let's go back again. And this time, we will move with ship B, ready to observe the relative motion of ship A. The course of ship A is 0, 3, 0 degrees, true. But because we are moving with ship B, the direction of ship A's relative motion appears to be in this direction, which is 3, 1, 0 degrees, true. Now remembering that relative motion is the apparent motion of one moving object to another moving object, Note that the direction of relative motion of ship B as it appears to ship A is parallel to the direction of relative motion of ship A as it appears to ship B. The directions of relative motion are reciprocal. Let us apply the principles of relative motion to a naval maneuver. This vector line represents the direction of own ship A's true course, its length of 10 spaces represents our speed of 10 knots. This vector line represents the direction of ship B's direction of relative motion, as observed from ship A. It is measured to a scale of 13 spaces for ship B's relative speed. By joining the vector line representing ship B's direction of relative motion and relative speed to the vector line representing ship A's true course and speed, we form two sides of a vector triangle. The third side represents the true course of ship B. The length of the third side of our vector, measured to the same scale as that used for the other two sides, represents the true speed of ship B. 
The vector diagram is the key to the solution of all problems in relative motion. It is not a geographic plot. Each line represents a direction and a speed. If the course or direction and speed of any two sides of the vector diagram are known, the direction and speed of the third side can be determined. Here we know the course and speed of own ship and the course and speed of the other ship. Measuring to the same scale used for the other vector lines in this diagram, we can determine the other ship's direction of relative motion and its speed of relative motion. Here are two ships on opposite courses. Ship A on course 270 degrees true, speed 15 knots. Ship B on course 090 degrees, true, speed 20 knots. By adding the vectors, the relative speed between the two ships can be measured as 35 knots. Let's bring ship A around to course 180 degrees, true, and see what happens to the vector diagram. The vector for ship A is in direction 180 degrees, 15 units long for her speed of 15 knots. The vector for ship B, drawn from the same point of origin, is in the direction 090 degrees and is 20 units long for B's speed of 20 knots. The direction of relative motion is always away from the reference ship. From ship A, the direction of relative motion of ship B is toward 054. If ship B is the reference ship, the direction of relative motion of ship A is toward 234 degrees. The length of the line connecting the two measured vectors is the speed of relative motion, in this case 25 knots. This speed of relative motion would be apparent from either ship. As commanding officer of a destroyer, you are about to receive this message. Proceed maximum speed on two boilers. Join convoy Alpha. Convoy course 0909 knots. Position 2930 north, 6145 west. You know that the convoy is north of you, moving east. So common sense prompts your first move. You head northeast, leading the convoy, until you can make a vector diagram to find your actual course. You first draw a relative plot. It shows your own position and the position of the convoy, bearing 0, 10 degrees true, distance 32 miles. This line represents your direction of relative motion, using the convoy as the reference. However, if you use this relative direction as your course, you will miss the convoy. Now to make the vector diagram to find your true course. First, the vector for the convoy. Course 0, 9, 0, true, speed 9 knots. That's one side of the vector diagram. Next, you plot the direction of relative motion, 0, 1, 0 degrees, true, as determined on the relative plot. Since you do not know the relative speed, the line is extended to an indefinite length. The third side of the diagram is your own true course and speed. Your orders call for maximum speed, so you lay off the vector length for 27 knots with the same scale you use for the convoy's vector. Swing the vector line from the point of origin until it touches the direction of relative motion vector line. This completes your vector diagram. The direction of your vector, away from the point of origin, fixes your course, 0, 2, 9 degrees true. You have already scaled it to your maximum speed, 27 knots. Now that you have obtained a definite length for the direction of relative motion vector, you can measure its length and find the speed of relative motion, 23 and a half knots. This will enable you to predict the time you will meet the convoy, 32 miles away. Now let us look at a problem in relative motion usually solved by the use of Siemens eye. Let's see what the captain of this cruiser is doing as he moves from his position on the quarter to a position alongside the oiler. It is obvious that the captain will not set a course directly toward the oiler since the oiler is moving ahead. 
the cruiser must increase speed and come right a little so that its direction of relative motion will go toward the oiler. How much does the captain of the cruiser increase speed? How much does he come right? And when will he return to base course and speed? He depends on his experience with relative motion and maneuvers using seaman's eye. This requires a great deal of experience, especially when the movement is between two ships that are close to each other. We have observed relative motion from a number of aspects. Moving cars on the highway, our friend getting his dinner, and the completion of a forward pass. We have seen how it is possible to solve a problem in relative motion which involves a ship taking station in a distant convoy. The solution was found by plotting a vector diagram. We have seen an example of solving a problem in relative motion by the use of Siemens I. Remember that relative motion is the apparent motion of one moving object to another moving object. All problems in relative motion involve this concept. The ability to make use of the principles of relative motion is essential to your performance as an officer of the deck, as a navigator, as a watch officer in CIC, and throughout your naval career.